A two-day informal meeting of NATO foreign ministers is taking place in Oslo, Norway. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who was in Sweden, issued a joint press conference with the Swedish Prime Minister regarding the Nordic nation's bid to join NATO, which is being stalled by Turkey. Blinken urged Turkey to immediately finalize Sweden's membership to NATO. He said that Stockholm has already taken significant steps to address Ankara's objections to its membership. And I think it has rightly focused attention uh, on some of its security concerns that both Sweden and Finland have taken uh, remarkable steps to, uh, to address, uh, important ones. So I think it's to Turkey's credit that it's uh, uh, been able to focus all of the alliance on some of these concerns, but it's to Sweden's credit as well as Finland's credit that they've taken concrete action uh, to address those concerns. Uh, from the perspective of the United States, the time is now to uh, finalize Sweden's accession. NATO General Secretary Jens Stoltenberg is chairing the meeting. Ahead of the NATO informal meeting, Stoltenberg said that a decision on Sweden joining the alliance is absolutely possible before the July summit. As we don't have any certainty, and of course we speak about uh, sovereign decisions by uh, uh, national parliaments uh, uh, to, to, to make the decisions on the ratification. Uh, my message is that it is within, re in, within reach, it's possible uh, to have uh, uh, Sweden as a full member uh, by the uh, Vilnius summit, uh, because there is a window now, especially after the Turkish elections and now with the Turkish uh, parliament uh, being constituted, of course it is uh, possible. Turkey and Hungary are the only NATO countries that are yet to ratify Sweden's membership. Turkey's president Recep Tayyip Erdogan was re-elected on Sunday for another five-year term. He has accused Sweden of harboring especially members of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, whom Turkey considers as terrorists. Stoltenberg said that he was in constant contact with Turkish authorities to try to get the final obstacles to Sweden's accession lifted. On the other hand, Norway's deputy foreign minister highlighted the significance of the two-day meeting. She said that Russia's aggression in Ukraine was made, has made Norway's and NATO relationship more important than ever. According to Norway's Deputy Foreign Minister, Norway shares a border with Russia, so Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine has really changed the security policy situation for every NATO member. The U.S. military recently released a video of a Chinese jet performing what Washington claims was an unnecessarily aggressive maneuver near a recce aircraft. Washington claims that this caused turbulence to the U.S. aircraft. The escalating Chinese aggression in the Indo-Pacific is also likely to be discussed in the two-day informal meeting. For more on this, our principal diplomatic correspondent Sadhan Sibul has sent us this report. Well, NATO foreign ministers have started to arrive in Oslo for the two-day informal meeting. We know that uh, the main day of engagement uh, happens to be on Thursday, while there will be ceremonial receptions today. But uh, the big focus remains on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, uh, its impact uh, on European security, and of course, uh, how the European capitals can work uh, together in terms of uh, the NATO grouping, in terms of the larger security architecture. But essentially, there are... Uh, uh, focus areas. One, of course, is uh, the Sweden's membership for the grouping, uh, something that has been uh, uh, facing resistance from Turkey and Hungary. And also, of course, uh, worry remains over the Chinese aggressive actions in uh, the Indo-Pacific. Uh, there has been evolution in the position of NATO regarding the Chinese uh, um, actions and how China has a bearing on the security, the global security and of course uh, security of many member countries. So that of course remains on the table as well. But all in all the two day meeting uh, feeds into the larger summit that happens in Lithuania in next few weeks. So Dan Sibyl for Vion in Oslo, Norway.